So, yesterday I had my uh, niece on my show, and uh, she made, Ruby made a really good point, and she talked about how, from her perspective, and you know, she's a vaccinated, not not an enemy of the, of the protest, but you know, it's, it's not her, um, her go-to thing, and she said, you know, so what she observed was the disconnect in both the parties. So you've got the people that are actually like, you know, uh, um, believing the government in a narrative, and whatever information you put in front of them, um, if it comes from official sources, they accept it willy-nilly. And, you know, this morning, um, we had a, a chap on my, my Facebook page who, who, you know, every day he spouted some mistruth that he has promoted in the MSM and you know that was that included the fact that the uh, toilets have been connected up to the water mains and not the sewerage mains and he came back later on and he actually corrected that but only after I pointed out that I'd be looking into this myself and of course there were a thousand journalists who were not journalists uh, protesters down there all the cameras who all went and took the photos themselves to show that that actually wasn't true so yes the MSM turned around and corrected it what once they had been proven that what they were reporting in the first place was incorrect, and so yes, let's go back to the point of, uh, and the, again, the protesters in the in the, in the uh, grounds. Now, as I understand it, a lot of them were in their funny little silver hats because it's a bit of self laughter, but of Billy T. James, like yeah, if, if you can't beat him, join him. And it's actually quite clever if you look. If you remember the 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 saying that's been attributed to Gandhi that first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you when you win. So by any form of comedy, creates an engagement which fast forwards the process. So you know there's. <laughs> There's more to the madness than meets the eye. Some people, I actually think, are wearing their fucking helmets because they actually think it's going to protect them from electromagnetic radiation, which has screamed around the parliamentary grounds, uh, much like <laughs> the flu has. Although I don't know that. I'm joking about the last bit because I actually haven't yet done an update to see what actually the situation is like compared to what the MSC was saying. But it screamed around... And, you know, a lot of people that you speak to and you sort of point out to them that, like, well, actually what they're seeing does have um, a, a, a police surveillance connection, um, a battle to monitor cell phones, collect data, high-resolution CTV, like all those facilities that are down there are in plain sight and they're not that hard to spot. Then they turn around and everyone insists that there's LOD. And I have to say, you know, my own viewpoint is from what I understand of, of that device. I mean, we do own, we do have them. I'm not, not, not denying that. Um, but I haven't seen any signs of them being deployed. But what I have seen is lots of signs of hypochondria. So, yes, there is people within the camp that are disconnected with, with reality and are living in their own little echo chambers, just as oddly as there are people outside of the camp such as the person I mentioned beforehand who jumps on every single bit of information that comes along and from the MSM and if it's negative and if it's his preconceived prejudices and bigotries then he embraces it without any fact checking. I think that's actually, my, my niece is quite correct, that is actually happening on both sides of the fence. I think there is however a, a major difference to be pointed out here is that the MSM pre present themselves as being a uh, a professional organisation that's, you know, it's, it's well funded, they've got $55 million from the government, uh, which sort of goes, oh yes, but we use these to become critical of the government. Well, no, the vast majority of stories actually haven't been, so take away the tokens and that claims completely not true and demonstrates a lack of self-awareness by the corporate media and their inability to identify with such things as conflicts of interest. And again, that's also guilty, uh, a, tru a truism, guilty within the protest game because the dominant media there is people like people like Counterspin who, you know, <laughs> there's a guy that's interests are actually involved in the mining interests. Um, he's got a specific agenda that he's willingly promoted. So don't make the mistake of thinking that Counterspin can claim any, any claims at all to journalism. They're not. That is a pure propagandist machine set up for a political agenda. There's no attempt to actually provide fear and balance. <laughs> Um, so in other words, it actually mirrors MSM, and worse than that, MSM actually give this organisation oxygen by every time they mention it, it's making like a lie, they, they alone represent what the protesters uh, believe, which is simply, you know, not true, and then so in empowering them, make people aware of it, and of course in an environment where people are seen every day on the ground, things being reported in the mainstream media, which is just simply not true, and I continue that, you know, the, they said the begin with, the toilets were connected to the surges, they weren't to wastewater, um, the place doesn't smell, I've been going down there every day, actually getting the place and getting compliments from the uh, the local, uh, you know, clean, street cleaners, um, 
the place isn't violent and horror. I mean, there is a, a small minority of which there are mental issues wrapped up in there, there are protagonists wrapped up in there, there are people who have passions running up high in there. But overall, when you consider everything that the protesters have been dealing with, any attempt for violent or antisocial uh, behaviour has been shut down pretty bloody quick. And as I said, we've also seen numerous cases documented where people involved in it have been thrown to the police line saying, well, look, we don't want these people. They're not part of our protest. They don't represent us. Only to be thrown straight back. Which again, you know, our friend, lovely there, living in, in the privileged middle-class suburbs of North East Valley, just goes, oh, no, the police wouldn't do that. Because that's the sort of little, little sort of privileged, selfish world they work in. And they don't actually realise how uh, condescending and actually even borderline racist they actually mean when they turn around and sort of suggest that, well, actually, oh, oh these people, you know, the, the claims they make are just fitting preconceived dogma. Uh, so, yeah, getting back to the MSM, the MSM is a well-paid, well-funded organisation that's actually trained, their journalists go through a series of, of um, higher academic, um, you know, uh, qualifications to actually be uh, you know, become professional journalists who are taught in multiple sources, fact-checking. So, you know, when you see the MSM actually making really, really base, base um, mistakes on a daily basis, there is really no other way to construe that, evidence, uh, that, that approach as being deliberate. In other words, they are telling lies. They are deliberately every morning not applying the same standards of which they apply to the protesters. Now, the protesters, their media, overall consists of, well... Pretty much all of them, if you took people like me out of the equation, which, you know, we're not, we're not NBS or NBC by any equation, stretch of the imagination, by any stretch of the imagination. But if you took us out, the bulk of their media basically comes from people who are ordinary Kiwis, who are not trained to be journalists, um, and their tools are basically their own eyes and their own cameras, uh, and, you know, put them in an echo chamber of people reinforcing what they're saying when they're not getting any, they can't rely on a, on a, on a uh, mainstream media to present a balanced and fair viewpoint, then yes, they're going to make mistakes. But the difference is their mistakes are uh, overall pretty... Um, what I'm trying to say is their, their, their mistakes, generally speaking, are not done deliberately. They are um, pretty basically at the end of the day, minor points which can soon be corrected with a bit of assistance from reliable and alternative credible media. Um, that's the thing that we dangerous say, is that you turn around, you're applying the standard to this, these, these ordinary people, which you're not applying to yourself, and you're providing them with no means or measure to actually correct those areas themselves. So, I mean, you know, with a bit of, of uh, education programming, you, you, you could be running stories regularly on actually how to check the facts, and what, these are the ways that you can methodologies apply, and actually doing some really good to make sure that people out there c can be both citizen journalism and sources of reliable information. However, that's not what's going on. And reason being, of course, is that the last thing that the MSM wants, and this, this will be applied to anyone who really knows the, how the media works and has worked in the media and isn't like trying to be delusional about how the media works, if people were to turn around and understand that, then they'd be able to turn around and see even, even more clearly through the, uh, the methodologies being applied by the MSM in these sort of cases, which don't fit professional standards. So I don't think that should, the, the push to for not provide that sort of ABC, that provided ABC, that authentication, that backing up and that credibility of information, largely is a result of a media not wanting to because for, for the risk of actually exposing their own shortcomings. So anyway, that's my little thoughts this morning. I'm going down to the protests to... Uh, document today, and we'll have a little look at the toilets. We'll carry them so they can feed a little more dogs. A couple of people have been down there a while now, which I'll just do a couple of sort of four minute, five minute, you know, first person um, uh, reports. And these are designed so that you can actually hear from the words of the protesters themselves what they're seeing. And, and again, this is something which our mainstream media hasn't done. Every, every night you get to turn around and see so called experts, and all these people go talk about what's going on. And not, you know, not one of them has actually come down to the protest grounds and actually spent any time with the protesters. So all they're doing is actually running around repeating each other's echo chambers. You know? And that's the thing that really pisses me off, is that you know, these people claim to be experts and, and the sources of, of reliable, credible information. They can't even bother to come and do basic ground field work. And they go, oh, but we're scared. The protesters, they're so violent. Well, 
I've been down here now for nearly on two weeks. I've gone in there every single day. I've walked into the tent. I've introduced myself. I've turned around and got myself accredited within the tent. I walk around very, very boldly with a media badge. I've had one <laughs> encounter with the security, which was then sorted out because they uh, cross reference with the, uh, the administration tent. Um, that's it. So that's, that's what requires you to go down there and get protests to report without actually uh, having any problems. Go down, turn up to the tent, talk to the administration people. If, if you're really concerned, um, get them to hand, put a minder with you. There's lovely guys like Joe down there that can wander around with the media and say, look, you know, tell, tell some of the more passionate people just to back off. But that's what it's quite. So they're, they're all idea is going, it's dangerous, it's terrible. Well, you know, that's just a pile of horseshit. And it says a huge amount about the people who are claiming to be claiming expert status when, as I said, they can't even be bothered to go down there and do that basic groundwork.